I. <laughs> Are you scared? <laughs> <gasps> Woo. All right, let's go with a little backstory. Um, I've known you now for years, mm-hmm. and I knew you single. Nope. I never knew you single? Never knew me single. <gasps> You've been with your partner this entire time? This entire time. Yeah. That's I'm mind-blowing to me. Freshly, freshly, I don't even know what single life means. Yeah, not, no one has any way of understanding what transitioning out of a relationship could look like i think we all only just see the movies which is like i hate him he did this to me it's the end of the world i never want to talk to him again but there's so many different versions that i am now finding out there's a lot of different versions of like breaking up with someone or uncoupling because i'm going through it and i didn't know this was possible and it's beautiful and it's transformative and i'm learning so much and it's, it's a wonderful process that I'm going to cherish for life. That's beautiful. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I love him so much. And we're no longer together. And it ended pretty recently still. So seven weeks ago. Honestly, for me, energetically, it just was the end of the romantic aspect of our relationship. There wasn't a match anymore in the romantic sense. It wasn't fulfilling our cups I saw both of our our potentials not being reached by being together because it felt like we were hindering each other's growth but right now I just I love him and I have so much more love than I ever have before and appreciation for what he's done for me and we still talk do you think a part of that love the expansion of love comes from letting go I think so I feel a sense of relief because I did, we both did try to make it work romantically for a few like solid months, like a a solid amount of time beforehand. And I almost started seeing my health suffer. I saw a lot of things in my life start to suffer. Um, My friendships were suffering a little bit, my health for sure. There was so much stress in my body that I kept on getting cold sores every single month, like clockwork for six months at least. There was a lot of things that just, I wasn't putting myself in the best position to make myself blossom and and I was starting to just not just be a pretty shit version of myself that I didn't like we were talking about this before how I was reflecting on what would divorce look like for me and saying that it would be at that point where I felt like it is so so unlikely and the likeliness exists in spaces that don't feel happy for me do you guys feel like you got to that space yes I don't think you need to push something further than it needs to go just to try to prove to others that you know it's forever yes i proposed yes i love him yes i still love him yes i did see myself with him long term i still oh now even just thinking about it like holding his hand when i'm like 80 (laughs) so cute because i love him so much and maybe as a friend as i i could so that aspect of things still does hurt but Do I need to be with him romantically and feel like I'm hindering his growth and he's hindering mine in some aspects in order to have that vision fulfilled? No. Um, Because it's just a vision and it can shift and mold. Because the vision that's actually more important to you is the vision of thinking of him at 80, looking back on his life and being like, fuck yeah. I love him so much that I want to set him free and I want him to do the same for me. And I think love now I'm, I'm definitely coming to a point where I do think that love isn't a case of needing someone. It's loving someone so much that you just want the best for them. And if the best for him means not being with me in the romantic sense, that makes me so happy. And I hope he sees the same for me. And I think he does because we both love each other so much. There's so much love that I have for him. Yeah, and it's weird to even be in a place where I have released him as my partner, but love him so much. And for people to say, well, it's a sign that you should stay together. I don't I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I don't think lo- love needs to be limited to he's my partner. I think it can be so much more than that, actually. I think that both are true, actually, because I want to acknowledge your tears. I'm like a robot <laughs> who's like, dream. the show keeps going. <laughs> we just <laughs> have a human moment. gets me every time. <laughs> I have a human moment with you. I'm sorry that you're feeling pain right now. No, it's not pain. And no, it's, it's just beauty of I mean, the, the, the vision of, yeah, wanting to hold his hand when I'm an old lady would be very cute. Mm. But I hope I can still do that as a friend. Overall, 
to me, the incompatibility feels like that person was on a path of, of structure and specific goal orientation and targets, mm -hmm. and you were on a path of discovery, play, exploration, mm -hmm. and maybe dismantling a bit of the structure that you used to have in the past. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely reached a stage now, um, very satisfied with my level of like material success and everything like that. I'm, I've reached a point where I'm like, I, I feel like I've mastered this space, like I'm good. And I don't really have an extra desire to keep working to be a workaholic because I've spent all of my 20s being a workaholic and I am kind of done with it and I don't really want it. Um, and he's still on the path of wanting that and that's so fine. Yes. And that's my path. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I just want to connect. I want to do acro yoga. I want to free dive. I don't want to talk about anything that I'm doing. I just want to have fun because I can. I'm in a position where I have definitely feel like I'm so secure financially um, that this is now opened up for me and I want to explore this space. And I felt like I couldn't quite escape the workaholic space or the the work focused space within that relationship as well. And I'm just gonna say this, this is really interesting to me. So breakup, not interested in anybody else, but I still have sexual energy flowing through me. <laughs> I'm masturbating and I'm not thinking about other people. I'm thinking about the success and the art that I'm gonna be creating. And it turns me on so much, <laughs> but I'm like, whoa. And I see the future vision of myself and I'm like, wow, she's so beautiful and sexy and interesting. And the art, the possibilities, I could go here and here and here. And I'm literally orgasming, org orgasming to yourself, to the thought of what is possible for myself. It's crazy though, because you don't want to be that person that's like, I'm starting over, but I don't know. There is, there's also, it's not quitting is failure. I feel like lots of people that have come online and said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you broke up, uh, failure. I thought you said you're gonna be together forever. You proposed all this. It's like, yeah, but why are you labeling this as a bad thing? Right. Because it's not necessarily bad. Like he's gonna come out, out of this better. I'm gonna come out of this better. And the loss is of what? It's only their perception of what is being lost of this like romantic relationship. But what about the gains? Is it, is it worth pushing something so strongly just because you said it's going to be forever i tended to be um with guys where i would go into the relationship really trying to help them grow and whatever it is that they wanted to achieve i would just help them it was a one-way thing to a certain degree like of course i learned from my partners as well but that one particular relationship I had where I don't want to say he started off with nothing because <laughs> that sounds terrible, but he, he started off at a very low level in his career and I helped him become the person that he is today. Like that's just fact. And I guess at the end of the day, I felt like I was giving so much of that and, and I wanted someone to give that back to me. Did that leave you feeling used? I didn't feel used by any means, but I felt like I was taken for granted, like I wasn't appreciated. So the concept of relationship cocooning that I was talking about with Sorrel is that there are certain relationships where you don't leave because it was bad, mm. but you leave because it was as good as it could be. Mm. But in order for you to achieve the next level of greatness in your life, it's not likely that you can do it with that person anymore. Um, and we came up with the term, yeah, relationship cocooning. <laughs> you coined it and it's the exact perfect thing that describes it. Cause when I try to tell people like, people are trying to understand like, well, what did this happen? Was he beating you and wasn't this? And like all these, I'm like, I'm, there wasn't this ridiculous toxic relationship that was happening that I had to be like, I can't do this. This is disgusting and this is, it wasn't that. So it's like, this is the perfect term to explain what I went through. How different is your life now versus the life that you probably would have had had you have stayed? I'd say it's pretty different. I just became a new mom, moved to a new city. I would like acquired land, made business and, um, ventures. I like, I traveled like crazy. Like I, oh my God, like I was in Africa like three times in one year. Did the end of your marriage change your perspective on the overall goal of being in romantic partnership with someone? Yes, definitely. Um, I grew up on the same kind of fairy tale 
one person forever that's it and it's just gonna be this bliss and you write it out no matter what kind of thing um whereas that whole experience really made me feel like there are people for different seasons of your life and people serve different purposes in your life and not every relationship has to last forever because you can have forever and it's not you're not happy like a lot of us look at like past relationships and be like oh people before us they were staying together forever they whatever and it's like yeah how many of our grandmothers or grandfathers were actually happy like sometimes you're like just because they stayed though that was that's to that's the epitome of success i think is what we kind of grow up thinking but yeah this this definitely changed that for me if she knows what she's doing, even if I don't want an orgasm, I'm coming. You know what right. I mean? I, I would imagine as a fuckboy, you are in a lot of arguments. Not necessarily. You would think that. But usually, fuckboy would just ghost you. Your ignorance is killing people. You've had how many sexual partners? Nearly 200. <laughs> I'm shallow. So I want really good looking men. And now, too, it's like, I can't expect a man to make more money than me now.